But then I came to this wheel and I quickly saw what the problem was. Do you have self-adjusting or manual adjusting electric brakes or do you even know? While we were pulling off the highway to go to a campground in Wisconsin last summer, I noticed something was different with the brakes. They just felt soft, like the RV was not stopping as well as it has in the past. When we got to our campsite, I hopped under the RV to give the brakes a quick visual inspection. But then I came to this wheel and I quickly saw what the problem was. If I come to this wire and this brake is also broken. I could see right away what the main problem was. Each of the four wheels has a pair of wires that come from the truck's seven pin connector. Of the four wheels, three of them had these wires broken or disconnected which means three of the four wheels were not providing any braking at all. I repaired the wires and decided to adjust the brakes just to make sure everything was working well. If you go in here, they go, basically go all the way in till they stop. I discovered that three out of the four wheels were self-adjusting brakes and one of them was a manual adjusting brake. I'm not sure why only one manual adjusting brake was on my 2017 Grand Design Solitude 3 Gen 310 GK. We brought our RV pre-owned in 2019, so maybe the previous owner had it installed. I think it's bad to have mixed match brakes because that could cause lopsided braking. At that time, I didn't know much of the difference between self-adjusting brakes and manually adjusting brakes. I had two lengthy conversations with Lippert Technical Service representatives in the axle department while doing research for this upcoming brake and bearing replacement. I am in the middle of changing my brakes right now and I have a self-adjusting and a manually adjusting brake right here. And I'm going to show you the difference between the two and why you should know if your brakes are self-adjusting or manually adjusting. And just because you have self-adjusting brakes doesn't mean you don't have to worry about checking the adjustment of the brakes periodically. In this video, I'm going to refer to the Lippert electric brake system, specifically our 12 inch brakes. But this should apply to all Lippert electric trailer brakes. And even though the components look a little different, they are similar to the Dexter self adjusting and manually adjusting brakes. These Lippert electric brake systems also have a right and a left side. I'm also going to show how to adjust the manual style and the self-adjusting style, both from the outside of the brake and from the insides. Now the easiest way to tell if you have a Lippert self-adjusting or manually adjusting brake is a look in the back of the brake and the two holes indicates that it's a self-adjusting brake and one hole indicates that it's a manual adjusting brake. The other way is to look at your axle itself and look at the little sticker that's on your axle. If it says the words SBSA or has the word SA in the uh, model number at all, then it's a self-adjusting brake. I'm gonna go over some parts of the adjusting brake assembly. You got your front shoe, which is the small shoe, the back shoe, which is the large shoe. This is the arm that attaches to the bag that transfers the power to the brake itself. And the adjusting has this little cable that goes through here, through a pulley, and to that little lever. It has the adjustment uh, screw down here with the little ratchet on it and a spring that goes over top. The manual brake has the same shoes. It says same small front shoe and big back shoe. It doesn't have the cable. It still has the arm that connects to the magnet that transfers the power from the magnet moving. The spring is quite a bit different. It has the uh, screw right here with a star notches in it and not a ratchet. And then this spring just kind of presses against it and holds it into place. So if you don't know how an electric brake works, very basically, when you hit your foot pedal in the, on the brake in the truck, it sends an electronic signal through your brake controller to this magnet. This magnet energizes and then attaches itself to the inside of the hub. When it does that, this gets pulled backward like this. When that happens, 
it expands this little square right here and then pushes the shoes out which make contact with the drum. Now the one thing that the self-adjusting does and that, that works exactly the same with the manual but with the self-adjusting when it does this and the, the brakes are um, have worn down and there's a bigger gap that means this arm is going to move more and it's going to go like this and it's going to create this little arm right here to make a click. Can you hear that clicking sound? It's making that click because this little cable is pulling the arm and it's ratcheting on that little spindle right there. And every time it does that, it, it removes it one notch. So what happens is as your brakes wear, when, every time you hit, a, hit the brake, it could possibly be moving it into a tighter position and spinning the little wheel that makes the brakes tighter that, that closes the gap between the brake shoe and the outer drum and that's the big difference with this self-adjusting and the manual now the manual doesn't have that little arm in the bottom it just has the star wheel that you manually adjust so when you move this little wheel right here it either expands this screw or contracts it and it pushes more pressure on the outside of these uh, shoes right here so that when you hit the brakes they have a much shorter distance to travel when you hit before they hit the shoes and create more pressure against the drums so that's the big difference between the uh, manually adjusting and the self-adjusting first of all to adjust the brakes you need to lift the fifth wheel off the ground by using a jack and jack stands to support the frame. You're going to have to get under the RV and adjust the brakes. So make sure you have it jacked up and supported correctly. Once the wheel is lifted off the ground, spin the wheel to see if the brake is dragging. Get under the trailer and look for the adjustment window. Pop out the plastic plug to access the adjustment mechanism. We want to expand the screw on the adjuster star so that the shoes make contact with the drum and begin to make it hard to spin the wheel with your hand. Then we want to back off the adjuster one or two notches so you can still spin the wheel with some slight lining drag. It is important that all the wheels are set with about the same amount of lining drag so the braking is equal. Manually rotate the star wheel up to increase pressure on the brake lining and then rotate the star wheel down to decrease pressure on the brake lining. With self-adjusting, ratcheting the wheel down in the forward direction to increase pressure on the brake lining and rotate the ratcheting wheel up in the reverse direction decreases the pressure on the brake lining. Adjusting, self-adjusting brakes in reverse is very difficult because you have to lift up the little adjusting lever out of the way to rotate the ratcheting wheel. Self-adjusting brakes really should only be adjusted when the trailer is brand new or when new brakes are installed. They should self-adjust properly after that according to Lippert. This is a brake spoon. You can either use a screwdriver or this tool. I highly recommend you spend the eight bucks Go to your local parts store and get a brake spoon if you're going to adjust your brakes. It makes it much easier. Now for adjusting the manual brake right here, this is the little star wheel I keep talking about that gets to spin. And when it spins in, let me put my spoon in here. When it spins in this direction, which is you're, you're kind of levering it up, that is making that, that, that screw longer. And when you make the screw longer, it puts more pressure on the uh, brake shoes. So this is what spins right here. And this little spring is just kind of keeping that star in place after you actuate it. Now, the other way to do it is to push it the other way. So you put your brake spoon in and then, then you can take it and push it down. Now, sometimes it's easier to use the other end, get it into a notch and then turn it down like that. So basically, this is how you turn it like that. And I'm using my tool like this. And what I'm doing right there, just to show you, I'm doing this. That's making it smaller. 
And this is what making it smaller looks like. Now for the self-adjusting brake, as I said before, usually does not have to be adjusted after its initial adjustment, uh, either brand new or when you install new uh, brake components. But if you do have to adjust it, this is how you do it. It has this little star ratcheting mechanism. You can see that pretty good. It's like a little, little ratchet. It's made to only go in one way because as this little wheel, as this little arm turns, it rotates it in that direction, which expands the wheel. The little ratchet is made to expand the screw, make the shoes come out wider, and close the gap between the shoe and the drum. So to make that bigger from the outside, if you're looking from the back of the uh, underside of the RV there, and you're trying to adjust the, that, you have to push down like this, and that rotates it, okay? And you'll see what I'm doing there. If you see if I can see it from the side here. And you'll see I'm coming in, and I'm doing this. And that is expanding the wheel and making that screw longer, making the uh, space between the shoes and the drum tighter. Now, the trick is, how do you make it uh, smaller? How do you reduce the size? And that is a trick because you have to move this little lever out of the way. You need to use a, use a tool like a screwdriver to move that little arm out of the way. And then you come down in here and then you go to try to spin that backwards like this. This is going in the opposite direction. So this is closing the gap, making the ratchet smaller if you need to. It's very difficult to do because if you don't have that little arm out of the way, it won't move because it'll catch on these little ratchets. So that's the trick. Get a screwdriver in there and then move this down. But you can imagine doing that. See, it's easy for me to do it sitting right here. But if you're doing this, looking through this little tiny hole, it's not that easy. I mean, you can do it, but you're going to need a screwdriver, a brake spoon, and have a flashlight pointing on that to be able to see it. So adjusting the self-adjusting brakes, especially in the reverse direction, is a lot tougher. But hopefully you never have to adjust the brake in the, right, in the reverse direction. That would only be if you went and manually tightened it too much, or for some reason it tightened too much on its own. I just want to show this graphic one more time. This is the right self-adjusting brake in the forward direction, which makes the brake a tighter. And then the right self-adjusting brake in the reverse direction with the screwdriver holding the adjustment uh, bar backwards, which makes the brake looser. And this is the right manually adjusting brake in the forward direction, which makes the brake tighter. And then the uh, right manually adjusting brake in the reverse direction, making the brake looser. It's important for you to know what type of brakes you have in your travel trailer or fifth wheel, manually adjusting or self-adjusting. You still have to do your yearly maintenance on the axles, repacking the bearings, inspecting the brakes, and inspecting the leaf springs and shackles. If you have manually adjusted, it is recommended that you check the adjustment periodically to make sure your RV is braking properly. I hope you found this video informative. I certainly found doing this project where I'm replacing the bearing and brakes a real learning experience. I think the best reason to do a project like this yourself is to learn how the RV works so when something goes wrong you are not stressed out because you know how it works and you know what it'll take to fix it. I am not an RV repair expert. I am just a DIY kind of guy that likes doing stuff like this and sharing with other DIYer types. Please consult your RV and manufacturer's manuals. I use Lippert documents extensively preparing for this project. Use the link on the screen to get to the Lippert support pages or call Lippert support techs. They are an awesome resource. Are you thinking about doing your RV brakes and bearing maintenance and repair? Please leave a comment down below and share your experience. I have more upcoming videos on Lippert brake and bearing maintenance, so if you don't want to miss them, please consider subscribing to our channel right down here. And remember, downsizing does make sense.